Hello guys, it's Shit Game Plays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. Welcome to fucking. And as for today's video, we have the unboxing. Actually, it is more than one video today, of course. We have the unboxing of the RX 9060 XT. And by the way, I want to thank AMD for sending this card, the ASRock Challenger model. And this is the card that is presented on the review that I just made. And of course, on the 40 games tested at 1440p as well. Basically, a, a decent design, a, a normal design, and one of the cheaper models, but it still performs very well in terms of temperatures and so on, is also performing very well. And performing better than this card, just to the sponsor. Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall, bringing you lots of software deals like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2019 or 2021 with a new Windows 11 design. And for all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 30% off, getting a Windows 11 serial key for $22 and a Windows 10 one for only $15. Then use the key on your Windows settings and you'll have an activated system. Let's unbox it. So here it is, the RX 9060 XT. This is actually the first model from ASRock that I've been, well, that I've been able to put my hands on for quite a while. I would say that the last one I believe was the 6750 XT and before that I had the 6950 XT. And of course, this is the first Challenger model that I have. The other ones were the Phantom Gaming and so on. As for the case of the 9060 XT 16 gigabytes, on the front we have the usual Challenger model, then 16 gigabytes with the OC edition and the 9060 XT that of course um, will have a lower power limit, I would say, since this model seems to be a lower end as well with only dual fan and so on. As for the side, we have again ASRock, Challenger and so on, graphics card, nothing really new. On the sides, it is more of the same, Challenger with the ASRock symbol or logo and the 96XT 16 gigabytes. On the other side, it is the same. And on the back, we have some more information, starting with the 96XT with the key features. Let's zoom in a bit with the key features of RDNA 4 architecture, 32 computer units with a third generation RT plus second generation AI accelerator cores. By the way, the computer units uh, are still the same as the 7600 and 7600 XT. And this is one of the cards where we will be able to see uh, how much they evolved in terms of, of computer units, like performance per computer unit, since they have the exact same numbers. 32 versus 32. Then we have HyperRx, Fidelity FX Super Resolution, DisplayPort 2.1a, and then the Radiance Display Engine, the new uh, display engine from AMD, AMD Fluid Motion Frames 2 technology, again with a 2.1 as well, and Radeon Anti-Lag 2. We also have Radeon Image Sharpening and so on, but those are different features. As for the system specifications, it is more of the same with a minimum of 550 watts or greater power supply. As for the design of the GPU, we have the usual again dual fan design, then the stylish metal backplate, stripped axial fan and the LED indicator. So nothing really new here, just the standard. As we open the box, we have the usual foam just to protect the card. The only thing that we have on this card is the Aswalk graphics card, quick installation guide and that's about it. We have nothing more, no accessories, no cables, nothing. It's just the manual and the card. And here it is. And as for the card, I am actually surprised because I thought in terms of build quality it would be worse, considerably worse, uh, considering the, um, the, the earlier versions that I saw uh, of, some, of some, for example, XFX and some power color models. The lower end models were considerably low quality compared to the other ones, but this one is actually interesting. A simple model, a two fan model, but the quality, the build quality is actually pretty decent, again, considering it is a low-end model. We also have the PCIe cover, which is nice. But again, focusing on the style, it is plastic on the front, materials and style. The axial fans look nice, quite nice, and seem quite stable. Then we have the Challenger uh, letters here, which actually give it a pretty nice, a pretty nice detail here. So in terms of design, I find it quite cool, actually, cooler than I thought it would be. On the side, we have the ASRock logo and the Radeon logo, so nothing mentioning the 96DXD, which is actually normal, but again, Radeon and ASRock logo with these, I don't really know what these are, <laughs> they're just here in terms of design, with the usual 8 power pin connection. On the back, we have the metal backplate, look at the noise. 
definitely metal. Saying also AMD Radeon Challenger and then with these patterns, these striped patterns. We also have a hole for the ventilation, which will increase, of course, the, um, the, the cooling ability. We don't really have a hole on the GPU die side here. We should have a hole, again, for better ventilation. But generally, this won't be an issue in such a low-end car like the 96XT. It's actually better than I thought, and in terms of design, I actually like it with the Challenger, as Rock Challenger. And by the way, we also have an LED. Let me see if I can show you on camera. We also have the LED option to turn it to, to turn the LEDs on or off. And this is actually one of the things that I like the most about the ASRock cards, because you really have a physical button where you can turn off your LEDs if you want to. Something that I haven't seen in any other card yet. And ASRock ones present the feature, and I really like this about those cards, about the ASRock cards. As for the PCIe or the other side, we don't really have anything new, just the cables for the fans and the LEDs and the PCIe. And to finalize on the back, we have three entrances, so three inputs, which are really not that bad, again, considering it is, uh, it is an entry-level card. And we have one HDMI and two display ports. And by the way, we have a nice detail of having it written here. As you can see, HDMI, display port, display port. It is a nice detail to have, nothing really huge or, in, or important, let's say, but it is just a nice detail. And again, the card looks way better than I thought it would. Just simply cool. I mean, simple, but cool. And now comparing the cooler with some other coolers in terms of sizes, proportions, and so on. For example, this one is the Radeon model of the 6750 XT. This one is the 7600 XT, the Pulse Edition. And this one, of course, is the 9060 XT. And as you can see, they are basically the same size. All these three cards are the same size, although I believe that this one with this chip will perform considerably better in terms of temperatures, in terms of LEDs and so on. With the ASRock one, we have the LEDs here. I don't really know if, we, if we're gonna have some LEDs here as well, because this part seems kind of transparent. So I don't really know if we have LEDs or not. I don't really know again, but this part definitely does and that is fine. But again, in terms of, of sizes and proportions, it is more or less the same. If we compare it to the 7600 XT, in terms of thickness, the 7600 XT is a bit thicker, not much, just a little bit, and it seems that, um, that the radiator has more fins, meaning that in terms of cooling ability, it should be better. But again, it is a Sapphire Pulse versus the ASRock Challenger, uh, which is low-end versus low-end. And on the back, it is quite different because all the Pulse models have a cut in the back of the die, something that, again, this Challenger model doesn't have, but the Pulse does have it. As for the comparison with the 6750 XT, um, in terms of thickness, I would say they're about the same, with the radiators, with the fins being slightly different, of course, because this is the AMD model of the 67, of the 6700 XT, not the 6750, sorry, 6700. And in terms of the backside, they are more look-alike right now. So the 6700 has no holes whatsoever, just the screws, and the same applies for the Challenger. But overall, I think it looks quite cool. So let's see how it looks inside the computer build to see if it is, well, that cool or not really. And while you saw that the card looks quite nice, even though it is on the lower end, it actually performs very well in terms of temperatures and so on. I've seen something in between 60 to 65 degrees and we have around 25, I would say that 25 degrees in the room, so it is not the usual 21, 22, so around 25, sometimes a bit more, and still the card stays in between 60 and 65 degrees, and again, at near silent operation. And with a maximum power draw of 186 watts, which is actually nice. And this means that even though it is only a dual fan design and the cooler is not that thick, it is more than enough for this card. I never heard of the car doing its thing, basically ramping up the fans, the RPMs, I never heard that. And the temperatures were also very, very nice, even, again, when overclocking. So for me, it is definitely more than enough and it is definitely what you want from a model. Basically, you want it to be affordable and at the same time, good. 
And well, that's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share this video. And by the way, if you enjoy the design of the card, I did of course, and if you think the temperatures are fine and so on, watch the review that I made with this same card, basically testing it again against the 7700 XT and some many other cards like the 4060 Ti, the 7600 XT and so on to see if you are actually going to upgrade for this card or upgrade to this card, sorry, or not. And you also have the video 40 games tested at 1440p because yes, even though this card is small, even though this card only consumes 180 watts, it can more than easily play most games at 1440p. Hope you enjoy the video and see you in the next one.